well, well. We got to experience some of that stuff for the first time. Uh, well, Dan at least. The Southern River Band boys down at Shelter, Bustleton, followed by DJ Genga. I will give you an update, Skeet, on what happened there. Uh, you are with Mark Reddings, Will Schofield, the Shelter Sportcast. Live from Back Chat Studios. How are you, Skeeter? Yeah, the band's back together, isn't it? Uh, the World Cup and Corny's doing a super job. Yes. Uh, now let's get back to uh, knowing a, a minor uh, level of, of uh, IQ when it comes to the, the World Cup. And we've been watching it and you've been travelling to Northbridge yes. at 3am, which is uh, a danger in itself, but you survived the uh, experience. So we've got uh, Australia playing uh, Test Series. We've got Australia playing in the Soccer World Cup. But I think the most important thing to touch on before we get into it is we did meet DJ Genga in flesh, in person he was wearing clothes he maintained clothes for the entire evening no naked dj genga quite disappointing on a what was what must be said is was a terrific night of live music but just let down at the fire at the finale by no stripping DJ, Skate. Well, bottom line is we gave it a good push and by the sounds of it, some really good numbers at the uh, at the show and uh, may it continue. Uh, yep. Plenty of those types of shows and the boys always put on a great show, the Southern River Band. It was very, very good, mate. So you can follow us on social, Shelter Footycast on Instagram. Make sure you give us a follow over there, shelterbrewing.com.au, all of our stuff over there. Send us an email, footycast at shelterbrewing.com. Dot com dot au shelter born and brewed in Bustleton WA. If anything were to go by was the weekend, that's the wrong sentence, but I'm going to keep going. Uh, shelter is expanding. There's a lot of people, maybe six, seven hundred people down at Shelter Brewery down there. Is bloody good night, Skeeter. You missed out on a good one, mate. Yeah, well, Shelter might be expanding, but so is my waistline after drinking <laughs> all this piss over the last uh, twelve months. It's been very nice though. Very nice. Very week. good. So let's get into the big moments of the round, Skeeter. Australia. Uh, lose their round 16 match to Argentina. We will break that down, of mm. course. Uh, Australia, which is where you've been working for the last week, get the win over the West Indies. Uh, what must be said, people were assuming it might be done in a couple of days, that test match, but it goes for the five days. Was it was a it- the slog. Yeah, I was hoping it'd be at three and a half days. Uh, maybe get that fourth day in so I get paid for that to uh, put the extra invoice in. But no, I went for five days. What so were you doing there? I was You're ground announcer. With... I was ground announcer. So, uh, for instance, when the, the players come out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your standing officials for today's match, Richard Ellingworth and Rod Tucker. And then I'd say, <laughs> please welcome, led by Captain Will Schofield, the Australian cricket team. So I did this for 450 overs of the game. And you know when you've taken a sleeping pill occasionally <laughs> and you have that effect where you're starting to get really dozy? Middle of the afternoon, that was me. After most after, after, what, what's, what was the catering like? The catering was it? fine. It was all good. It was just the cricket was slow. There was no one there. Um, Australia was always going to win, but it took us until essentially tea on day five to get the job done. So, no, no, it was, I love my cricket. As you know, I do love it. But that was a that was a hard ask. Your enthusiasm was waning. waning. <laughs> it was waning. <laughs> it was waning at about lunch on day one, to be honest with you, because I thought this is this is you know cause, I mean I wasn't getting paid a fortune. I was just uh, I'd agreed to it in March or April because no, nothing like a shelter footy cup. Nah, well this is this is just in and out, very short and sharp. <laughs> uh, uh, was was um, was it an exciting game? It wasn't, was it? Well, there, there, really, and there was no one there. No, no well, the problem is, look, I started on a Wednesday, finished on a Sunday. Australia favourites, yeah. Uh, look, cricket hasn't taken off. It doesn't feel like it's summer yet, to be totally honest. Yeah. So uh, we've had the World Cup. Yeah, there was. There's a couple of reasons. I'm not sure whether the Australia, the WA public, has you know jumped on board the Australian team yet. But they're all. If they were playing England, different story. Yeah, playing South, India, what, South Africa. Does it take out a bigger crowd? South, if South that's Afri- a good team. South Africa's number two in the world. We're yeah. number one. So. Oh, that's a series which will take place shortly. The West Indies, look, they had the captain was terrific. I'll go into that later, but uh, Craig Brathwaite scored a hundred. Uh, they've just got a lack of talent in their bowling at the moment. So, um, yeah, the Australians and, and there's a couple of changes to the Aussie squad, which I'll touch on when we get to that. But including a WA speedster, the wild thing yeah, coming in. I've heard that. I thought Sean Tate was the wild. He thing. was the wild thing, but now he's gone. Okay. There's a new wild thing in town. Okay, very good. Excited about that. And the final big moment of the round. AFL decide to jump in on the Socceroos party. Now, this is the big one I wanted to touch mm. on before we get into the details of the, uh, the other two Australian figures. The AFL at 7.30 on Australian Eastern Standard Time, in the, middle the of the, in the middle of the Socceroos game, literally in the middle of it, dropped the AFL round one fixture. Is, is that like a... Like a little calculated like, little big, big brother, drive-by. yeah. Big, well, of course it is, right? Is that is that a bit embarrassing? Like, actually, some, that doesn't work. Yeah, I read somewhere that they were they were scheduled to to drop that 
before, before the Socceroos, as in days before that. Now, whether there was some... But it just seems a very strange time at 7.30 Eastern to drop that sort of information. Just drop it an hour and a half later. Let, let them have an hour an hour of, of... That was a good game. Well done, Socceroos, surely. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I okay, mean... They butchered that, I reckon. You know, we... we AFL ain't losing any any fans <laughs> out of the Socceroos doing well. Yeah, the Socceroos may get some football, as in the round ball game, may may win some extra fans, but they're not going to take them from from our sport, which we love <laughs> AFL. It just a, it was like a sooky Big Brother thing. Wasn't yeah, it? it was a bit weird. But to update you, if you haven't caught up on it, Fremantle will play St Kilda Sunday Arvo. Uh, Ross the boss. He's, that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? It is cool. And in fact, they're trying to do a bit of that uh, rivalry stuff. Uh, when you think of it, um, Geelong. Collingwood Friday night is going to be a beauty. Richmond Carlton is traditionally on the Thursday. So they haven't done the grand final replay. Well, they couldn't. I mean, it didn't really make sense Geelong and Sydney. So they'll get a hundred thousand of the G on Friday night. Geelong, they'll get Collingwood. big numbers for that. You're right. I think Sydney's going to have to play the Gold Coast Suns. Um, Melbourne the Bulldogs. So grand final from the previous year. Of course, they opened the season this year. Um, there was a bit of talk. Do we put Clarko up against Hawthorne? Uh, North Melbourne v Hawks, but I think there's a, a bit of sensitivity still around yeah. the, the racial investigation, so they've just let that pass. Essendon v Hawthorne, though, that's as big as it gets in terms of hatred in uh, in, a, in a rivalry in Victoria. So, so they have almost done the rivalry round, haven't they? Yeah, they, they sort of try and yeah. create that buzz the first round, and I suppose it shows you where the Eagles went this year by playing North Melbourne at Marvel Stadium. But, but I'll tell you what, though, it's... The, the, the heartache of this year for Eagles supporters and the club is that you, you get a nicer draw, or yeah. a better draw on paper anyway. Yeah, correct. I mean, and you, look, I know it's not a rivalry, but Adam Simpson used to coach under Clarkson. Clarkson's first game at North Melbourne. North Melbourne played West Coast. And, and he played 306 games for North. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. And so, um, uh, uh, yeah, what's that? Bottom two, teams. Bottom two teams, exactly right. 18 v 17. So... I, th- I think it's a good matchup for I West think, Coast. I think the Sunday game is really fascinating with, with as you mentioned, Freo and St Kilda. But more importantly, neither of those games are in Perth. No. Well, Ed Sheeran. The Sheeran has replaced the Sheeran, as they say. It's just, <laughs> Will yeah. you be going down to see Ed, Ed Sheeran? Ed Sheeran I, fan? Well, I'm owed a couple no of... Southern River band. I'm owed a couple of tickets by Claire from Optus. I've done a couple of things during okay. the, when the EPL teams were down. So, well, is that, is that, me. Is that... Is that potentially where you'll be cashing in, is it? The well, Ed Sheeran concert? Well, because my, my daughter's, you know, there's, I think Taylor Swift, they said, is coming as well. This oh, is all for my daughters, not me. Skeeter. I'm actually going to the MCG this Saturday night to see Billy play. So I'm looking forward to that. Billy. Joel. Brownless? Ah, uh, Joel. Sorry. <laughs> so He goes okay. He's a oh, he does. He does. But if you say Billy, like, you're talking to Dan and I. Like, yeah, we, no. we both just looked at each other then. Yeah, no, Billy, I know it's a different era, different maybe demographic, but... Um, it's still rock and roll to me. Shelter Sportcast, Mark Reddings, <laughs> Will <laughs> Scofield. Yeah, no, Let's get into some <laughs> of the sport that's been going on uh, over the last week. Thank you, Dan. That was a nice little pad for you to press that button over there. Uh, let's get into the cricket first, Skeet. This is uh, this is your neck of the woods. Australia wins the first test against the West Indies by 164 runs. A lot of people before this game were saying, "Is it going to be over on the Friday? Is it you know done and dusted by Saturday?" Uh, to the West Indies' credit, they I thought you know from what I saw of the game, they fought, uh, they they slogged it out. Yes, it didn't feel like they were ever going to win, but it wasn't an easy. Uh, game for the Australian team. It wasn't a soft kill, which most of us thought, uh, particularly when they said the pitch was going to be really juicy and lively. Australia won the toss, batted. It never really lived up, although there was assistance to the fast bowlers. I mean, the numbers, Australia 4 for 598, just shows you that the deck was, in the end, played really well for the batters. Marnus made a couple of hundred, uh, 200 in the first dig, 100 in the uh, second. I think he becomes only the eighth player roughly in history to have scored a double century, then a century in the same test match. Steve Smith, of course, a double as well. He goes to, uh, went to join Sir Donald Brabham with 29 test hundreds. So right. he's in pretty rarefied territory there. Um, Travis Head becomes... Uh, I was going to say, he's, he, hasn't, he hasn't notched one up, has he? 99. He's, I think he's got five test centuries next to his name from memory. But he, he joins that elite club, Scully. 99, dismissed in Perth. There's been a few. Uh, Mark War was dismissed by... He's run out by his brother Steve, I think, going back many years ago. Imagine, um, the, imagine the change uh, remark. Michael Slater, who's, who's had Slats, better days yeah. uh, at the moment, he's, uh, he made 99 going back at the Wacker. And I guess the most famous and, and saddest one when you look back now that he's no longer with us is SK Warren. Was that Made 99 Perth? at the Wacker really? against New Zealand. Uh, Daniel Vittori was bowling, who in fact bowled a no ball 
uh, on that delivery. But Warney just had to noodle one through the leg side, went for the big slog sweep. Caught on the boundary. Caught on the boundary, and he made 99, and that's as close as he got to a century. But anyway, Travis said 99. Chopped on. Travis said chopped, chopped on. Chopped on, yep. Um, he was just trying to... Go, they were trying to get some runs quickly to make the declaration. Um, the big talking point out of the game, Nathan Lyon, six wickets as well. Marnus gets man of the match. Pat Cummins, though, with the quad injury. Now, I don't know if you've ever done a quad... He took the field yesterday, but didn't bowl, which was very curious to me. I think if you're injured, why be out there at all? That It seems very strange to me. He, he had to labour when he went after the ball towards the boundary. Um, I, I, I can't see him playing on Thursday in a test match. You Have you had a, done a quad? Yeah, so quaddies are different to hammies, right? So hammies, if you, even if you slightly uh, strain a hammy... Two? Yeah, but, but it get you... You, you can't run around on it and no. it's just going to maintain. Like very rarely can you do a, like a little hammy and be like, oh, I'll just get, I'm going to go at three quarter pace. Like, because it just doesn't operate like that. Your quad, you can. It, for some reason, because it's a bigger muscle body, even though the hammy is bigger. It, the, the way the quad is put together, if you do uh, one formation of the quad, you can actually, the rest of it looks after it, if that makes sense. You, you sound like you know what you're talking about. Oh, I, I kind of, I kind of do, but I kind of don't. You're but being a bit, you're being a bit. Um, no, you're being I, humble. I, I would, I would go as far to say is the quadricep is made up of four different muscles. I believe. Have four. you ever done one? Yes. Okay. And you can do little ones, and the rest of the quad takes over, and it you can't really make it worse depending on what part you've done. So it could be high, it could be near your hip flexor up the top, it could be down the bottom near your knee, it, it could be in the middle. If it's in the middle, that's usually a, the good ones. They're the, they're usually the ones you can get away with. But in saying all of that, he won't play next week. No, there of is absolutely, it's Thursday. It's, it's a Thursday test Absolutely, no. So I heard him speaking um, or, uh, to the press and he was like, well, you know, the whole reason was so I don't miss the whole summer. I guarantee if he comes and plays and he's got a little quad and he tears his quad, he'll miss the whole summer. He'll miss the whole summer. No, he'll be he'll be rested. And and you know what won't do him any harm at all. They've they've already brought in Lance Morris, who's been terrific. He's the leading Sheffield Shield so, wicket taker. So, so this is this is the new wild thing, Lance Morris. He's 145, 150 k's, and we talk about Sean Tate as being the guy that had that nickname. Well, geez, he's a leading wicket taker, twenty seven in the Shield so far this season. He's come in as cover. So too Michael Neza, who's bowling really well for Queensland. He's, he's a pink ball specialist. Absolutely, pink ball how, specialist. How, how do you become a pink ball specialist? Well, day not, well I suppose it's bowling at night or bowling in the twilight. Bit Neza, of, bit of, bit of, he's had a really good season as well. But you can forget those two players in essence because the player that will replace, in my mind, Pat Cummins, who has an average of 9.5 with the ball, is a guy called Scott Boland. Right. He's, he's already in the squad. I know. Yeah. No, he's, 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 he's the Melbourne the MCG specialist. Hero, hero, yeah, exactly. Right? So there's no reason really why you have to go outside of that to to drop Neeser or or either Morris in there. Right. Bolin will play, but it, what it does do for the 24 year old from WA is that it gives him a, a little. You know, it's like being brought into a squad, even as a, as a footballer, a young guy. I think geez, I'm I'm on the right path, yeah. and, that, and he'll, he'll be around the group for the week. And so he's a West Australian Lance Morris. Yep. yep. Oh, in I fact, know. I remember going to Richmond some Park in South Perth a year or two ago to interview Dennis Lilly, and before I spoke to Dennis, he was actually doing some work with Lance in the nets. Now, Dennis is is the all time greatest in my mind as as a fast bowler. He um, was so um, effusive in his praise for him and and what Morris can do. So. Uh, look, he, he's a young bloke and interviewed him a couple of times on radio and he's, yeah, he sounds like he's got a heap of potential and boy, don't we love it when a new fast bowler comes like on quick, the scene? Like proper quick. Oh, really quick and he likes to see a bit of nastiness but yeah, anyway, he's got that, that X factor that uh, he genuinely makes batters scared. That's great. Um, to finish off on the cricket, you were there for the five days. Yes. You spoke a little bit about you know, whether the West Australian crowd, there probably wasn't enough there to, to, to warrant it, but we see the Justin, uh, long live Justin Lane, or whatever, Justice for JL get taken <laughs> away. People are talking about that West Australian thing. How did you see the, the crowd? Were, were, were Australian team just as well received as they always are, or was there, was there well, not, when not Pat, enough? To... When Pat Cummins was introduced, there was a little jeering. I thought, oh, you pathetic individuals, really. <laughs> How, I mean, what, why would you boo a bloke that he's, he's taken 200 test wickets? Because he mentioned something about a lint to gas, and, you know, that, you know, I've got blokes who have been coming back playing footy after being done for domestic violence, drugs, and, and oh, yeah, no problems, but we'll boo Pat Cummins. He's one of the nicest guys, I think, going around. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's that's a very small minority. Yeah, it was poor crowd, and look, one West Aussie in the side, yeah, I won't say we're on the nose as an Australian cricket team, but it, it's just, it, cricket has got too much on the schedule at the moment 
to make it you know a special series. And Gary Lyon, I heard him say, and I totally agree. As a kid, he used to look forward to a series against the West Indies, albeit a powerful West Indies lineup. Now, because everything just blends in, it's it's too much. It's like going to the dessert buffet four nights in a row. You just, you, you get sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. So, like back in the day, there was no T20, no. right? And so it was either a one-day series or a test series, and there was some space in between. Is that a what lot you're of saying? space. Yeah. Yeah, it was the congested calendar of today. It just wasn't the case back then. So it's like everything. You look forward to yeah. the Boxing Day test, which we still have, but you look forward to those special moments during our summer. Now, it starts in October. We've got our first one-dayer, because that's why we obviously the, the waffle got bumped from Optus. First one-dayer... In early October, um, it just it just feels too early and too long. The seasons it just blends into one another. End of the day, Australia's number one in the world. South Africa's number two. We've got one more test against the Windies. Then we take on South Africa in a three test series. That'll be a good series because South Africa have got some quicks and they've got some nastiness about them. Oh yeah. yes, we like which that. we like that. Want to see a bit of you know a little bit of spirit, bit of uh, bit of sledging. So the West Indies is almost like a warm up for that series, and that'll be uh, is that Sydney, Adelaide, and MCJ? Uh, it'll be. Oh no, it's not Adelaide. 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 Yep. Thursday, West Indies, and oh, I think Gabba, Brisbane, yep. Melbourne, Boxing Day. Yep. I've never been to a Boxing Day test, and then of course Sydney. There was a stage where, when once I got my MCC membership scheme, I didn't miss one for about oh, eight or nine years, but haven't been back there for a little while. Uh, courtesy of Mr. Mark McGowan, thank you very much. Uh, what is your favourite dessert at the buffet, by the way? No, no, my wife is a very good dessert maker. She does great. In really? fact, what we'll do is we'll bring in some some stuff. Yes. she does. Look, mousse is my like that's my one wood. But she does caramel slice. Really? Uh, oh, mate, she's seriously... Don't be afraid to so bring she, any of that in here. So she looks better than me, looks younger than me. Uh, she's smarter than me. Oh, she's more organised. Uh, yeah. There's so many yes. um, yin and yangs with us, and she also does beautiful dessert. What do you bring to the table, Skater? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Very good. My uh, sense of humour. The Shelter Sportcast. Mark Reddings, Will Schofield. <laughs> Yeah, as you said off the top, Skeeter, the Socceroos, um, we, Dan and I went down to the North, like? Northbridge Piazza. I thought it was the Plaza, got to be honest. I thought it was the North. I thought it was the Northbridge Plaza. I, it, it, I was on radio yesterday, I said the Northbridge Plaza, and people laughed at me like you just did. I've never in my life did, heard Were you with Bowie? Yes. Did he laugh at you? Yes. Everyone laughs at me. Did you know it was the Piazza? Yeah, then? yeah. You, you knew it was Piazza? Yeah, well, it certainly wasn't Why North is it called the, P- the Piazza? I've never heard that... I've never heard anyone call it the Piazza in my life. What, what Headed want, down to the Northridge Piazza. What please. I want to know is, getting there at 2.45, yeah. what was the percentage of complete yes, uh, derelicts yes, yes. Uh, like you and me stumbling <laughs> yeah, out of a pub yes. at 2 o'clock compared to, uh, oh, we're fresh and ready to go? It, it, was a, it was a pretty interesting experience. So uh, what I did was um, set my alarm for 2 because I, I, I was sort of thinking, if it had been a 2 a.m. game, I would have tried to go all the way through. But 3 a.m. is oh, like, yeah, it's, you you by the end of the game at five, it's daylight and right. So <laughs> daddy day, yeah. Care. So went to bed, uh, set the alarm at two, got up, drove in. Um, obviously no beers. Obviously, I drove through Leaderville just to see if there was like soccer on. No one. It was complete ghost town Leaderville, and I thought, geez, I, if I'm driving to Northbridge here and there's no one, I'm like, what am I doing? Turn here? around, go. Home. Got into Northbridge. I've never. I, at no point in if I talk about never heard the piazza be mentioned. I've never seen traffic like it in Northbridge. Really? It was pumping. Like got stuck in a traffic jam in Northbridge. Um, I I went one way and couldn't get out, and then so I, had to, I pulled over on a side road and just parked the car and walked in. There would have been I don't know three or four thousand people in there on, at the piazza, and the breakdown. Uh, when I got there, I got there a little earlier than Dan, probably about yeah, 20 to 3. It was going off. So how did it compare to when you went the week before for the Pride Parade? Uh, <laughs> sorry? The Pride Parade? That was the week before. No, I missed that one. Thank you, Skeeter. I did miss that one. But I rocked up and there was uh, a flare just got, got <laughs> let off. Oh, I, 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 seriously, I saw this BCF had run out of flares. Yeah, so I was expecting that as well. I spoke to the cops because as I walked through, the cop was coming across the road holding the flare and... Sober Scully thought it'd be, I said, oh, big night, mate. <laughs> right? It's like, don't get too excited. Like, he was taking it off someone, putting it down a side street. I said, oh, what are you expecting? He said, oh, mate, we've got, got quite a few cops down here. We, we expect a pretty big one. So I walked over and it was going off. People, like, this is 20 minutes before the game. There's chants going on. There's people getting lifted on shoulders. There's, Argentinians getting lifted around by the crowd. Like, it was really but good. It was a good vibe. Oh, awesome. And I joked about the Pride Pro, but that's the sort of vibe you it, want in the it crowd. Was, it was, it was, there was just a lot of people coming into to one one place, right? And so, um, at, yeah, as it went, a couple of flares got lit off. Um, 
the, the, the crowd kind of fizzled out and people were very intent on the soccer. I, I would say like it was a big, it, it wasn't just people just stumbling in there. Like there was people who had come to watch the soccer, if that makes sense. You know, it was people were really intense on the soccer, um, deflating on the first goal. So uh, Messi kicks that first goal in the first half and it was a bit deflated. But at half time, I didn't think much had changed, right? So if you go to one nil down in an elimination game, or, gotta, or you just have to you just have to score to get it to. Well, you got to attack, you got to yeah, throw some right. caution to the wind. So you know, less likely to win probably at that stage. And then Matty Ryan makes that mistake in the second half, and it was a it was a big deflating on on the crowd. Um, I think someone let a flare off at that stage as they thought, oh, "Fuck it, I'm not going to be able to let, <laughs> let him go." Um, in terms of the breakdown of of, I reckon it was probably, I reckon it was close to oh, seventy thirty. 30 being like Dan and I, 70 like straight out, on. come straight out of the night. But clubs. well behaved from what you saw. Oh, I saw one incident and it was pretty well managed by a lot of police presence. So then, so Matty Ryan, you know, has an absolute mare. Um, not, sure, yeah, not, not that I'm not sure what he was doing. He was, <coughs> he was under pressure. Isn't it funny? Pass keepers, back. keepers like we talk of Andrew Redmayne, yeah. the grey wiggle, uh, keepers. Get the, the glory, but they also get the they, they have the one, pain of, of being the villain if if they are indeed the, the reason you you lose well, a match. Soccer, like any, like I sort of said the last couple of weeks, it's one moment, and you have you either get it right or you get it wrong. You get it wrong, it's a goal. And and in soccer, there's you know in footy, you have a mare in front of goal. You, you got the rest of the game to, to you make it up. In soccer, it's pretty much you know you yeah, done two one possibly. result. Yeah, I mean there's there's mi- minimal moments to to make your mark. You got Lionel Messi, the Argentinians. I I, I think. A 2-1 result. And I saw uh, some of the, the highlights in the last 15 minutes after we perhaps got a little bit lucky with an own goal. But let me take that. I thought we more than uh, held our heads up. Uh, so the, the first half, <coughs> Argentina just can complete, completely controlled the ball and deserved that to be 1-0 up. Um, second half, um, it was an even game. Without that error from um, Matty Ryan... We, we we have every chance. We, got, we we made a couple of really good chances. Our right winger, I can't think of his name, literally looked like Messi at one stage, broke inside the box, cut back in and just missed. Uh, and then, uh, of course, a young fellow, Garan Cole, with... The kid. Right, so 77th minute, Goodwin scores. It's an own goal, but he's having a ping. Like he's, So you, you have to uh, say that's his second goal for the tournament. Correct. And like, so yeah, I, when I saw the own goal, I was like, oh, it was a deflection. It wasn't like one of those own goals where it's a butchered by the yeah. defender. So it goes in, perfect. Australia have a few more opportunities and the crowd's up and about now. Like they've got the, um, uh, you fat bastard, you fat bastard, you fat bastard, you you're shit. shit. <laughs> right, so they got that going and it was like up and about and there was a few chances and then it was the it was seven minute overtime, extra time um, and like Cool just created this chance and the crowd was up and about and it like, you know, it was a, Awesome save by the um, Italian goalkeeper. Argentinian goalkeeper. Uh, yeah, t- Argentinian goalkeeper, not I- Italian. But and the, the, it, it was get, unreal. I get the feeling that 2-1, f- the whistle's blown full time, that the Australian fans disappointed, but they go, you know Bravo. Yeah, yeah. and that's what, that was the feeling there as well. So I'm very glad we went down and like did it. It was sort of a bit of a toss of the coins, like do we go, or just watch it in the living room or, you know, and, and it was awesome. I was, look, I, I, overall, was I happy or not I went? Happy. Yeah, I mean, Harry Suda, I thought was um, just having a look at some of the highlights because I was actually in a, in a bit of a coma at that stage having watched 380 <laughs> overs of <laughs> Test Cricket. So I, I couldn't go a yard on Saturday night. Um, but one of the nice bits I saw on social media in brief was the Australian players getting the selfies with Lionel Messi in the rooms afterwards. Really? Said, oh, yeah. I mean, that's what I was thinking. All I thought, who's going to be able to swap their shirt with Lionel Messi? I, I don't think that happened, but they certainly got some selfies. And, yeah, and they, they actually arrived back home tonight, the Australians. And the question is now moving forward. Graham Arnold been in charge for four and a half years. Does he does he go again? He wants a breather. Um in my mind, and this is coming, we're both sort of just on the outside. If he wants to keep coaching this yeah. team, if he's got the energy and you know the appetite, why wouldn't he? Well, I mean, the results, the results speak for themselves. Yeah, not only the results, but the way the team played, and and it's a young squad. Like he has, it's it looks like he's built that squad. If that makes sense, it's not it's not a squad that he's inherited, and he's got some guys that you know sort of he has nothing to do with. It looks like he's built that from the ground up. So. You would think it makes sense to keep him at the helm. Um, they score in every game they play in in the World Cup. Yeah. Like, was that you or Coiny that was speaking about there was odds for them not to score? It's $5 I think, for yeah. them not to score a goal. They scored in every, the World every Cup. game. Every match. In fact, the first time to score in a uh, 
knockout stage. I mean, so there's so many firsts for this team. Uh, with let's be honest, you go back through the Socceroos and and think of the Vadukas and Kuehl, uh and Kale. We don't have one. Who, yeah. Who's our, We don't have a standout. I mean. Aaron but there could be because they're all they're no, all saying, there's, there's no real elite. Yeah, but after this World Cup, there kind of is. Like the Harry Suter, no one knew who he was before this, no. right? So he he's that guy. Goodwin scores twice. Um, uh, and that you know, there you go. That's that's about that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> That's about it. To finish off on the World Cup, there was a couple more results overnight. Um, what do you got there for us? So Cameron Devlin didn't play a minute. Cameron Devlin didn't, he got the, the Messi didn't play a minute. So how did he get his jersey? He must have just gone asked for it. Lionel Messi's thousand. You cheeky so bugger! It, so it was his thousandth professional game. He scored seven hundred. I don't care if he's eight hundredth game. That is that is one that if you put, go to, go to eBay now, that's going to go for. That's a ripper. Well done, good on Mickey Devlin. He hasn't had. <laughs> look at all the boys getting selfies. That's brilliant. That's that's bloody good. Well done to the boys. A couple more results overnight. Netherlands defeat USA. USA out of there. See you later. I'll tell you what though, yeah. and I didn't realise this, but the 3-1. next World Cup is in the USA. So that um, I'll tell you what if. If we're still doing this in four years, Shelter Sportcast, we are definitely we've got to find a way to get to the USA. I will see you in Vegas, twenty twenty six. Really? We'll set this up. We'll take the fridge with us. Take the take the <laughs> shelters. We'll set it up in the MGM, and we'll do, we'll, we'll do a live podcast. deal. Done. Even though there's no one accepting that from the other side, but I reckon we can get there. I'd love to do it. Netherlands play Argentina uh, in the quarterfinals. That's juicy. Yes, very good. All, all the matchups now are so France beat Poland three one overnight. Olivier Giroud, who used to play for Arsenal, honestly, when he played for Arsenal, he had the fattest foot. Like it would, the ball would touch it, and it would just go at right angles. Like he could, he had no poise, no s- skill. I'd even say he is now the all-time leading goal scorer for France. So thanks for nothing as an Arsenal player, Olivier Drew. Well done for your country. France progress, and they will play England. England v Senegal overnight. 3-0. England looking very, very good, and I can already hear the... It's coming home. <laughs> yeah. They are, they are you know, playing some really good football. Yeah. Uh, Southgate, the, the manager's doing a super job. Uh, Harry Kane uh, scored this morning uh, 3-0. I think they are the leading uh, goal-scoring nation in the World Cup they are. at the moment. I think uh, it's... Sets da- it up beautifully. Well, I think it's dangerous. Given, given their past in World Cups, I, I would like to see them sort of... Have to try more? F- oh, yeah, I, I would like to see them just, just fighting for their best form, not hitting their best form in the in the round of 16. Yeah, I need to ask you this, and I think it's a question that we... Now that Australia's out, obviously, yep. and there was never going to be a, a deep sort of, you know... Semi-finals for us. Who do we barrack for? I think it's got to be England. No, I can't. I can't bring myself to break for England. Um, It's just one of those, you know, in sport, you, 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 well, you can't be Argentina. I'm sorry, you can't go for the team that gets rid of Australia. No. Well, maybe that is the team that wins the because Italy, when they defeated us in 2006, uh, they went no because so there's one way to look at it, right? Argentina get us out and they win. It's like oh, um, you know, that's good. That's what you want. But I, I would argue that if if they win it then we're a Matt Ryan uh, mistake away from winning the World Cup. So I, I can't have... No, I can't, I can't have Argentina. Well, so do, the Netherlands, you know... They're Netherlands, irrelevant. Um, France, can, could arrogant. Not, I couldn't, yeah, could not have myself cheering for them. Is uh, it England? Japan? I, Japan's still in it. <laughs> what? Anyway, we're trying to work out who to barrack for in the, in the finals at the World Cup. That's the bottom so, line. So I, I'm going to go for England because I've, um, I've got a bet on, on a betting oh, platform okay. that I'll win a th- I, it cost me 10 bucks. They offered 101 odds on every team in the World Cup. Oh, yes. And I have $10 on England. So I'll win 1000 if they win. Oh, so, so you're just talking through your back pocket. Oh, okay. what, how do you talk usually, Mark Reddings? <laughs> 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 I talk through uh, prices. A dollar, they're about, probably about $7, to, uh, probably $10 to win the, the World Cup. For uh, the <coughs> as Skeeter would say, we're talking absolute pooparama at the moment. So Shelter, XPA, X Factor, that's going to go to Harry Suter. He's been our best player. Yep. Uh, the entire tournament. If we can get a slab of beer to Harry Sutar, then I think we're doing pretty well. Shelter XPA X Factor goes to him. That's done and dusted here on the Shelter Sportcast. You can follow us on social. Shelter Footycast. Uh, Skeet Egg reckons he's get recognised for the podcast here more than anywhere in his it's life. It's a lot of fun. I've got to tell you, and I'm going to the MCG on Saturday. I'm going to see Billy Joel. If you get recognised there for the Shelter Sportcast. If I get a picture with Billy Joel, what will you give me? Oh, a slab, of, a slab of shelters. <laughs> That'll do. We'll, 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 I'm at long odds, but I'll give it my very best shot. Hey, just remember, Scoey, don't go changing. I like you just the way you are. I don't know what that means. It's a song title from Billy Joel, you tool. <laughs>